Hey guys, in this video we're going to uh, review or practice the radiometric dating calculations. You might have missed this in class or maybe you didn't understand it, um, but I'll go through some of the practice problems. Now these are the same problems that we did in class and so um, if you understood those problems, really all of the problems that you're going to do are modeled after these six problems. They're all very similar. They might just have different numbers or uh, parents and daughter pairs. So you kind of have to look at these examples and then use those to help you solve some of the other problems that are very similar. So on this sheet, a couple of important things. Um, one is, as we learned in class, um, we have uh, some elements that are radioactive and that's these guys, and they decay to a stable daughter. Um, that's something you should remember. Each of these pairs has a different half-life. And so if you look at this one, the uranium-238 decays to lead, the daughter lead-206, and one half-life takes 4.5 billion years. Each of these different decays from parent to daughter has a different half-life here. And this chart's really important because it tells you the half-life of each of the parent-daughter pairs here. So uh, the other thing that we're going to need to solve these problems is uh, we're going to need a special chart that we made in class. I'm going to scroll down and on the bottom page here, I'm going to create this chart. This is really important that you can create this to, uh, calcul to do these calculations. So the first thing we're going to start with is half-lives. All right, uh, and then for each of these, we're going to do the percentage of the parent and the percentage of the daughter. Okay, so it's really important that you start with zero half-lives like that igneous rock just formed and it has not been through any half-lives at all. It's brand new in essence. And so we know the percentage of the parent isotope that hasn't decayed yet is 100 and the daughter is zero. After one half-life, the definition of a half-life is the time it takes for half of the parent to decay to the daughter. So after one half-life, we're going to be at 50, 50. After two half-lives, we're going to cut this 50 in half, and it's going to be 25, 75. After three half-lives, it's going to be about 12.5 and about 87.5. And after four half-lives, it's going to be about, now I'm going to round here, okay, it's about 6.3, um, and then this is uh, going to be 93.7-ish, uh, and let's do one more, five half-lives will be about 3.2-ish, uh, and the daughter percentage at that point is going to be um, about 96.8%. Um, after that, we're getting to pretty small amounts of parent, and usually um, on these problems and stuff, we only go to about five half-lives. Now, the other thing I'm going to add here, um, we can use this chart to go between percentage and half-life. We can also use this chart to help us determine the age, or if we know the age, oops, come on, I'm using my stylus for the first time here. So we can go between the age and the half-lives by dividing or multiplying by uh, the numbers in our chart. We can go between the half-lives and the percent, and we can also use this to determine the amount, which I'll abbreviate amount. So in all these problems, it's a good idea to determine what are you given, and then use the chart here to go um, from one thing to another. So let's go to the first problem here. Um, the first problem says what per percentage of C14 would remain after three half-lives have passed. Now the first thing we want to do with this one is identify, for all these problems actually, is identify are we dealing with a parent or a daughter? Carbon-14 is up here, and that's a parent, um, as it says up top here, okay? So carbon-14 is a parent, and this is simply asking the percentage after three half-lives. So we're going to come to our chart and we're going to find three half-lives and we can see that the percentage of the parent that's left is 12.5 percent and that's all that we have to do there okay this is 12 after three half-lives that will be 12.5 percent and we're done with that problem um, you'll notice up here that it does tell you to show all of your work or explain how you got what you got. And if all you had to do was look at the chart, you can just put 
C H A R T job. Uh, and then we have uh, somewhat of an explanation there. All right, number two, a sample of rock contains 25% of uranium-238. How old is the sample? In this case, we're looking for the age, and we are given the percentage of the uranium-238 as the parent here. So we have, if we have 25% of the parent, how old is the sample? So, Let's look at our chart here. I need to get to age. I am given the percentage of the parent. And I already forgot what it was, 25%. So if I have 25% of the parent, we can see here, all right, that's gonna be two half-lives. Now I can bring that information back up to my problem and say 25% means that the parent has been through two half-lives. And I figured that out by the chart. Now the next step of this is to say, well, if it's been through two half-lives, how old is it? We know that for uranium-238, back up here on the chart, okay, uranium-238 has a half-life, one half-life is 4.5 billion years. I've gone through two half-lives with this problem, and so I'm gonna need to multiply the two half-lives times the age of each half-life, which is 4.5 billion years. And I'm going to abbreviate billions of years by. When we multiply that out, we get 9 billion years. Okay? So again, we were given the percentage of the parent here. We were able to go from the percent parent to the number of half-lives by using the chart. And we were able to multiply the number of half-lives times the age of each half-life given to us in the chart to get the total age. Okay, all right, next one. Number three, if a mineral sample started out with 360 atoms of rubidium-87, how many atoms of that would be left after 94 billion years? So in this case, we're asking how much? What's the amount that's gonna be left? We are given an age, 94 billion years. Um, if we come to our cheat sheet down here, since we're given the age right here, and we need to know the amount, there's actually a couple ways we can do this. We know we're going to have to get to half-lives. We know we're going to have to go this way. And when we're going from the age to the number of half-lives, we're always going to divide. Notice on the last problem, when we went to half-lives to age, we multiplied. Um, in this problem, we're going to go the opposite direction, so we're going to have to divide. I know um, I can look up at my chart and say this is the parent, rubidium-87. Rubidium-87 has a half-life of 47 billion years. Okay, so I can divide my age, this is the age, divided by 47 billion years, and that's the amount of one half-life, okay, that we looked up on the chart. When we divide that, we see that this has been through two half-lives, okay. Now, there's two different ways we can approach this problem. I'll show you both ways. Um, because it's been through two half-lives, and we know we started with 360 atoms here, we can cut this in half twice because each half-life reduces that by one half. So one way to solve this is to say, okay, after one half-life, all right, it's gone from uh, three, uh, 360, um, and it's been uh, cut, cut in half. And so um, my uh, that's going to be 180, okay? And then I need to cut it in half twice because it's been through two half-lives. So another half is going to be 90. So the total that's left after two half-lives is going to be 90 atoms of the rubidium-87. Now I said there's two ways to approach this problem. This is one. Another way to approach this is we can come and find the percentage that's gonna be left. So if I scroll down, two half-lives is gonna be 25% is gonna be left. Um, and so I can take 25% of my starting amount. And if you remember your percentages in math, I can do 25% of means times in, in terms of percentages. 25% of the starting amount is 360 atoms. 
um, one, and we can just solve for that. Now, remember when you multiply times a percentage, a percentage is just the expression of a proportion. So we need to convert this to a decimal by bumping our decimal twice over. So 0.25 is the same as 25%, but mathematically we need to multiply by the decimal. So 0.25 times 360 is equal to 90 atoms, which is what we got here as well. So either approach, approach A, where you split it in half, as many half-lives as you have, or approach B, where you multiply by the percent to find the amount, either one will work, okay? All right, number four. What percentage of potassium-40, which is a parent, would you expect to find in a rock that is this old, 5.2 billion years old? So we're given the age of the rock, and we need percentage. So let's scroll down to our chart here. Again, we are given age right here, and we need to work our way this way till we get to the percent of the parent. So um, let's come back up here. If we know the age is 5.2 billion years, we need to know how many half-lives that's been through. So again, we're going to have to divide this. Potassium 40, let's come up here and see if that's the parent or the daughter. That is the parent. And the half-life for this parent-daughter relationship is 100, or sorry, 1.3 billion years. So 1.3 billion years. If you divide this up, this should give us that it's been through four half-lives. Okay. So again, if we know the age and we need to find the number of half-lives, we're going to divide by the time it takes for one half-life to go by. That'll tell us how many half-lives it's been through. So four half-lives here, and I'm looking for the percentage. So I just need to go to my chart. Anytime we're going between half-lives and percent, I'm going to go to my chart. Four half-lives is right here. That's about 6.3% of the parent. Okay, so four half-lives equals 6.3% of the parent. And I got this from the chart, if I'm describing how I got it. All right. Next problem. A sample contains 131 atoms of thorium-232 and 393 atoms of lead-208. So in this case, we're actually given amounts, and we need to get to age because it's asking for how old the rock is. So we're going to have to find percentages and then get to half-lives and then determine the age. So for these, we're going to take 131 of the parent and 393 of the daughter, and we need to find the total because of percentage part divided by whole. We add this up. All right, and we get three, four, 524. Now we're going to divide each of these, 131 divided by 524, and 393 divided by 524 times 100, and that'll give us our percentage, okay? Um, so let's see, when we do this, I don't have my calculator in front of me, so that would be, I got to do a little bit of rough math on here. 13, 13 is about 26, and 13 is about 39, and 13 is uh, 3, 4, five. okay, so it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 um, times here, so this is going to be... Um, one, two, three, four. Hold on a second. Okay, so this is going to be 25%, and this is going to be 75% of the daughter that's remaining. So with these percentages, we see that we have been through, um, let's see, 25 and 75, so two half-lives. And then we come here, two half-lives uh, is... Uh, we need to figure out how long each half-life is Oops, for this parent-daughter. This is thorium. So we come up here and we see thorium-232 is 14.1 billion years. And we're going to have to multiply that here. All right, and so we're going to get 28.2 billion years. Um, I'm running out of time. This last problem is um, very simple, but it's asking about the daughter instead of the parent. So it's going to be pretty easy to do. That's all the time I have for now. Bye-bye.